let's start first with the general characteristics of organisms which are included under kingdom animalia so what are the general features first and foremost all organisms which are included under this particular kingdom are eukaryotic you know what eukaryotic means eukaryotic organisms are those organisms which have a well defined nucleus other than that organisms included under this particular kingdom are multicellular which means several cells are going to form the organisms which are categorized under kingdom animalia so they are eukaryotic they are multicellular another very important feature of organisms included under this kingdom is absence of cell wall they do not have a cell wall like plant cells and fungus and some bacteria they do have a very prominent cell wall but animal cells lack a cell wall they do not have a cell wall most of the animals also show prominent locomotion which means that they can show movement except for few which are going to be sedentary which means they are attached to a substratum and they cannot show any movement but let me tell you most of all animals are going to be uh, the ones which can exhibit locomotion except for few lower animals which can be sedentary like sponges other than this let me tell you that these organisms have well developed systems specifically organ systems as you go up into the most evolved phylums of kingdom animalia if you see the lower phylums of kingdom animalia you will observe that they do not have well developed systems but as you move ahead in the phylums in kingdom animalia you will see that their organ systems go on developing right so you will see that how well developed systems especially respiratory system digestive system excretory system nervous system they develop across phylums the lowest of all phylums may not show you some prominent characteristics but as you move ahead you will see that these systems are going to become very well developed and you will see peculiar organs that you have studied in case of humans as well other than that let me tell you that these organisms show response to stimulus and that is because of the nervous system that they have the sense organs that they have because of which they show a very prominent response to stimulus other than that also we need to discuss that most of the organisms here are consumers they are not autotrophic they cannot synthesize their own food so they depend on other organisms which means that they are heterotroph let me tell you that some of them can be predators which means that they feed on an another organism which means they capture a prey and consume them up some are going to be parasitic which means that they feed on their host okay some of them are going to be uh, saprophytes which means they feed on dead and decaying matter right so they could be predators they could be parasitic they could be saprophytic so these are the different types of animals that we have under kingdom animalia right now let me tell you that what would be the basic feature on the basis of which we will classify animals there has to be some specific criteria right us criteria ke basis par hi hum organisms ko classify kar sakte hain so ye kaun se criteria hai jinko use karke hum animals ko classify karte hain is what we have to study here so let us study what are the basic criteria for classification so there are total 6 criteria that we need to study on the basis of which we will categorize animals into different phylums and different classes so what are those criteria criteria for classification let us begin with the first criteria the first criteria is grades of organization the second criteria is going to be symmetry the third criteria is animal body plan
The fourth criteria is going to be telome, which is also known as body cavity. The fifth criteria is going to be germinal layers. And the sixth criteria is going to be segmentation. So these are the six criteria on the basis of which we are going to classify animals. The first one is grades of organization. The second one is symmetry. The third one is animal body plan. The fourth one is coelom or body cavity. The fifth one is germinal layers and the sixth one is segmentation. Let us study each of these criteria one by one. Let us begin with the first criteria which is grades of organization. So some animals, some organisms are going to have just individual cells. So we call it as cellular level of organization. Unme tissue ya organ nahi hota. Hum bahut achche se jante hain ki jab bhi hum kisi organism ke baare mein baat karte hain an organism is made up of something called as organ system, right? It's made up of organ system. Organ systems are made up of organs. Organs are made up of tissues. And tissues are made up of cells. Right? So we know that cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and organ systems make up organisms. Now, if you talk about respiratory system, we know that human respiratory system starts with the nostril, you have the nasal cavity, you have the pharynx, you have the larynx, you have trachea, you have lungs, you have alveoli, you have bronchi, so many different parts, right? All these parts make up the respiratory system. But these organs or these parts are made up of certain tissues and these tissues are made up of certain cells, right? So in some organisms, you can find only cells. So you call them a cellular level of organization. In some, you have cells as well as tissues. So you call them as tissue level organization. In some, you have tissues and organs. You call them as organ level organization. So you will see these three categories of organisms Kingdom Animalia mein dikhai denge. Kuch aise honge jinke paas sirf cellular level of organization hai. Kuch aise honge jinke paas tissue level organization hai. Kuch aise honge jinke paas honge organ level organization. Okay? The second criteria on the basis of which we will classify organisms is called as symmetry. Now, let me tell you that there might be organisms jinko tum kisi bhi angle mein kato, kisi bhi axis mein kato, aapko equal halves nahi milenge. अगर आप ह्यूमन बीइंग की बात करो यू कैन कट अवर सेल्स इन द सेंट्रल एक्सिस और जब आप अपने आप को सेंट्रल एक्सिस में काटते हो तो आपको दो इक्वल हाफ्स मिलते हैं ऐसे सिमेट्री को हम बोलते हैं बायलैटरल सिमेट्री क्या बोलते हैं उसको बायलैटरल सिमेट्री सो इफ यू सी द इमेज हियर यहां पे उन्होंने बीटल का इमेज दिया हुआ है सो so आप उसको अगर सेंट्रल एक्सिस में काटोगे तो आपको बीटल के दो इक्वल हाफ मिलेंगे even in case of humans, we have bilateral symmetry, right? So when you cut an organism along the central axis and you get two equal halves, you are going to refer to it as bilateral symmetry. Now, if you cut an organism along any axis, along any plane, and you get two equal halves, then you are going to call it as radial symmetry. What do you call it? You call it as radial symmetry. So you can find this in organisms like Hydra. I'm sure that you have learned about Hydra in your lower classes and I'm also sure that you have heard about starfish. So all this show radial symmetry which means that you cut them along any axis, along any plane, you are going to get two equal halves. So aise symmetry ko hum bolte hai, radial symmetry. Or agar aap kisi organism ko kisi bhi axis par kato, kisi bhi plane par kato, agar aapko do equal half nahi milenge, so, us type ke symmetry ko hum bolenge asymmetry. What do we call it? We call it as asymmetry. So, best example here in case of asymmetry is going to be sponges. Okay. So, in case of symmetry, we have three types. If you cut an organism along the central axis and you get two equal halves, 
you're going to refer to it as bilateral symmetry. If you cut it along any axis, along any plane and you get two equal halves, you call it as radial symmetry. And if you cut it along any axis, any plane and you're not getting any two equal halves, then you call it as asymmetry. For example of bilateral symmetry, we have spoken about humans and beetle. For radial symmetry, we have taken example of hydra and starfish. And for asymmetry, we have taken example of sponges. Let us discuss the next criteria for classification of animals. So the next criteria is animal body plan. Let me tell you that in some organisms, cells are going to be present individually. They carry out all processes individually, but they are not going to be responsible for bringing about functions together. Okay, they are going to be present individually there as single cells there. Okay, or wo ek tarike se division of labor to kar rahe hain, lekin wo sare cells saath mein ek organism make up nahi kar rahe. They are as good as individual cells. Okay, aisa jo body plan hai, usko hum bolte hain cell aggregate body plan. Okay, what do we call it? We call it as cell aggregate body plan, wherein cells are going to be present singly. Iske liye bhi, I think the best example that I can give you is sponges. So these are individual cells, they are going to carry out their functions, but it is very difficult to refer to them as you know, as an organism as a whole. They are all performing their functions. Then if you talk about the second type of body plan, it is called as blind sac body plan. Now, what is blind sac body plan? In case of blind sac body plan, the, let me tell you that there is a common opening and that common opening is going to function as both. It is going to function as mouth as well as anus. Yani ki, this is an opening from which they will take in food and this is the same opening through which they will give out their excretory products. So, this is one opening which they will consume bhi karte hai. Or waste products bahar bhi nikalte hain. Aisa jo body plan hai, usko hum bolte hain blind sac body plan. What do we call it? We call it as blind sac body plan. The best example for this would be organisms like hydra. Okay. And then we have a third body plan which is called as tube within tube body plan. So, yaha par from the image itself you can see that the example quoted is fishes. And let me tell you that it is also seen in humans. Okay. So fishes and humans, they show you tube within tube body plan. Now, why do we call it as tube within tube body plan? Please understand that our body itself is a cylindrical tube. And within that, there is an another tube, which is our gastrointestinal tract. It has two openings. It has an opening which you call as mouth and the another opening is what you call as the anus. From the mouth, you take in food. From anus, you're going to release out the excretory products, right? So because your body itself is cylindrical and inside that there is an another tube which has two openings, an opening through which you take in food and another opening through which you give out excretory products, that's the reason why we call it as a tube within tube body plan, which is seen in all higher organisms including for example what we have taken here, here is fishes and humans. So there are three types of body plan. One is called as the cell aggregate body plan. The another is called as the blind sac body plan. And the third is what we call as the tube within tube body plan. Okay. So moving ahead, we are going to now discuss the next criteria for classification. And the next criteria is what we basically call as coelom. Now what is coelom students? Coelom is nothing but body cavity. Okay, so a body cavity is what we call as coelom. Now, let me tell you all organisms may not have a true body cavity. There are some organisms which lack a body cavity completely. They do not have a coelom. Such organisms are what we call as a coelomate because the letter A here stands for absence. So they do not have a body cavity because of which you call them as a coelomate. We have taken example of flatworms. Flatworms do not have a true body cavity because of which these organisms are going to be referred to as a coelomate. 
okay now let us talk about the next type you have something called as u coelomate u stands for true so these are those organisms which have a true body cavity for example annelids earthworms are the best example so they have a true body cavity also humans are going to be u coelomate because we do have a true body cavity right and then we have something called as pseudo coelomate pseudo stands for false so these are those organisms which uh, you know seem to have a body cavity but it's not a true body cavity because there are going to be pouches of cells uh, because of which it does not have adequate space so we refer to it as pseudo coelomates or the ones which have a false body cavity here the example is of nematodes like ascaris which can cause infections in humans so we have three categories we have a coelomate these are those organisms which do not have a body cavity which do not have a coelom which we uh, have taken example of flatworms and then we have u coelomate which have a true body cavity for which we have taken examples of annelids like earthworms and also of humans and then we have spoken about pseudo coelomates these are those organisms which do not have a true body cavity they have a false body cavity because of which we call them as pseudo coelomates an example of are of those organisms which are included under the phylum nematoda and for example ascaris right now we are going to the next criteria of classification which is germinal layers let me tell you that there are three germinal layers when you talk about humans yes we have an inner germinal layer which is called as endoderm so you can see here endo stands for inside okay so the inner germinal layer is what we call as endoderm then we have a middle germinal layer which is called as mesoderm meso stands for middle and then we have outer or the external germinal layer which is called as ectoderm because ecto stands for outside right so the innermost germinal layer is called as an endoderm the middle germinal layer is called as a mesoderm and the outer germinal layer is called as an ectoderm right so we have three germinal layers all higher organisms have three germinal layers so organisms which have three germinal layers we call them as triploblastic okay all organisms all higher organisms you talk about humans you talk about fishes you talk about rats all these are triploblastic organisms these have three germinal layers right and you talk about diploblastic organisms all lower organisms are going to be diploblastic okay right from our sponges to hydra all these are diploblastic organisms which means they have only two germinal layers the inner germinal layer which is called as the endoderm the outer germinal layer which is called as the ectoderm and between ectoderm and endoderm they have a non living substance which we call as mesogloia what do we call it we call it as mesogloia it's a non living substance which is present there instead of mesoderm okay so in all lower organisms we have only two germinal layers and we call such organisms as diploblastic organisms and in all higher organisms we have three germinal layers we have the outermost which is ectoderm we have the middle which is mesoderm and we have the innermost which is called as endoderm and such organisms which have three germinal layers we call them as triploblastic organisms 